Hey, how you doing? I'm Van. Welcome back to the only channel on YouTube that will fight you in a field if you don't subscribe. I don't, I don't fight. Welcome back to the six-part series on Captain Planet, or more specifically, the worst episodes of Captain Planet. We're covering the worst episodes from every single season of Captain Planet. So far, there have been two parts, meaning this is the third part, so we're about halfway there. The episode in Season 3 that we're going to be covering is Episode 10. Hog Tide. This episode centers around Gaia telling a story to the current Planeteers about another group of suspiciously similar looking individuals with a similar set of powers and a similar, you, you get it, they're the same characters, just in the past. These individuals in the past go against villains that are quite similar to a couple that we actually know of in the current timeline of Captain Planet. These villains have a plan to create cheap housing on beachfront property, which slowly erodes the land and causes a hurricane to destroy things, but that's also their plan for some reason as well. It's a really kind of weird episode, there's a lot of things that don't make a whole lot of sense. And it kind of feels like Gaia's just making things up sometimes, considering how forgetful she is at multiple points in the story. Like, she straight up forgets what happens to characters until reminded by the Planeteers. At a couple of different points, she's just like, no, I'm not gonna tell you that. I don't want to. Fucking, alright, why you, Why are you telling us this story thing? Please subscribe, I am almost at a thousand subscribers. I'm like at 961 at the time of recording this video. It's been a really, really good summer so far. I appreciate it tremendously. Thank you so much. And if you ever have any suggestions for content or any ideas for things that you want me to cover in the future, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'm trying to actually finish this series. My ADHD is telling me to go ahead and abandon it and do something else for a little while and then come back to it. But I want to actually do this and be done with it so I can, I can not have to return to Captain Planet. Anyway, yeah, let's start this trash. Man, what a storm! Plant life holds the sand in place. Natural vegetation is the best protection for coastal regions. But it is no protection against a bulldozer. <sighs> yeah, th th thanks, Kwame. I don't, I don't think I could have put that together without you there. Also, what is this garbage? Like, they're starting the episode with a Planeteer alert? Sort of? Like, they've immediately begun doing the preachy stuff, which is normally reserved for the back end of the episode once everything is done. I guess they probably realized between seasons two and three that most people turned the show off during that like period or changed the channel and then came back to it when the theme song was going out. That's what I would have done. That's absolutely what I would have done as a kid. I would have flicked through some channels to something else and 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 watched literally anything else. You all know Rick's grandfather was Rex Rigger the first. I bought land cheap near this hotel to put in houses. Don Porkerloin. I'll pay anything if you can get me this permit. One of the things I gave praise to season two for is the improved voice actors. And with the exception of Rex here, who kind of sounds like he's doing a really bad impression of somebody whose name is escaping me currently right now, uh, Don Porkaloin himself is genuinely kind of menacing in this episode. Why such disrespect? You don't come here like a friend to congratulate me on my beach development or I'm becoming a grandfather. His lines are delivered well and he's got some gravitas to the things he says despite his fat, lumpy, stupid appearance. This is the villain in the main timeline, Hoggish Greedly, who currently Don Porcoloin has for some reason, like is never explained. I don't really know where his parents are or if Don Porcoloin ate them for brekkie fast, but something happened to them and he currently owns Hoggish Greedly. Oh, good. Now someday I will ask you to do me a small favor in return, children and grandchildren. <laughs> Okay, sounds fair. <laughs> but like genuinely, he's kind of threatening though. Until he until he does like <laughs> like <laughs> I'm <sighs> Betty Blight. Don't tell me Betty Blight was the grandmother of Dr. Blight, right? As a matter of fact, yes. What? No way. How would you have guessed that? Was it just from the fact that everyone was there? This was the smash bros of Planeteer grandparents who have been working together for generations? We're just cleaning up your fucking mess. Is that right, Gaia? Fortunately, there were people even then who cared about the environment. And you remind me of one of them, Wheeler. You can be my honey, as long as you have money. Another one resembled you, Lenka. Excuse me, Mr. Commissioner. Don Porcoloin asked me to talk to you. 
<laughs> Her father's gone. Time to be a predator. So yes, these are the stand-ins for Wheeler and Linka for this particular period in time. And the thing you'll notice very quickly is that whoever is voicing Linka has not a single clue how to do this southern accent. Don't be long, Daddy. So, I do not believe we have been properly introduced. Uh, well... As I said, one little dance can't hurt. Like, maybe it's worse for me because I'm from the South, but I, I don't think any human being has ever sounded like this ever, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person to think this. Also, they're in Florida. <laughs> they're just beachfront property, Florida. Who sounds like this there? I don't think these are period accurate. I don't think Captain Planet's period accurate, you know? That's one of its flaws. It's one of his many flaws. There was another young man who was a lot like you, Kwame? Oh, yeah, they say, see, there's Kwame. This is, I think, the episode where I feel it is implied the most the Planeteers have been cloned multiple times over multiple generations in order to defend the planet against pollution and evil through Gaia and uh, whoever else that they fucking work with sometimes. Whoever, uh, uh, is there anyone else? Captain Planet, that guy, the name of the show. <laughs> but genuinely, what are the odds that there happen to be five individuals of the same exact perfect physical description of the Planeteers. They're not the parents of the Planeteers, by the way. Mati didn't even keep his same ethnicity. And Lee might not have either. We don't know, considering she's just from Asia. That's not Korea. That's not China. That's not Japan. It's not Taiwan. That's not Thailand. Asia. Mati, as a matter of fact, goes from Indian to Native American. Ah, good. Perhaps I convinced him to save our sea coast. Don't count on it. <gasps> Don't be scared. My name's Asi. I'm Lee. Three characters. They wrote in the stand-ins for Wame, Wheeler, and Linka. And then they went, okay, well, uh... And they had nothing. They couldn't include them in anything else. They couldn't make them employees also. They had to just make them show up out of nowhere on the beach one day. <laughs> At least with Lee, she's here painting. There's a reason for her to be here. Mati's stand-in just shows up, and he's just like, I'm gonna fucking sue him! So I'm studying the white man's law to keep my people from losing any more land. Without plant life, our coast would look ridiculous, and we can't afford to look ridiculous. Daddy, thank goodness! It's time we went to our rooms, Lydia. And this is the South, so I guess you know how that's gonna go. I'm gonna beat you with a belt really, really bad. He declined the deal, boss. Well, you know what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wish I could have seen the commissioner's face when he woke up next to the state tree. Here's your zoning permit. What? 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 What am I missing? What's what happened? What's what's going on? The commissioner wakes up with a stick tree in his bed, and because of that, it terrifies him so badly that he screams, presumably for the rest of the night, and then immediately gives Don Porcoloin the the fucking permit. I don't understand how that makes any sense at all. Not only did the commissioner not know that it was Don Porcoloin who did that, but it's a stick tree. That's not scary. It's not a decapitated horse head. It's not the arm of a loved one. It's a it's a piece of wood with foliage. And how does that translate to giving the permit to Porcoloin? Okay, yeah. Whatever. It gets stupider from here. Okay, and all this beach will be washed away, and that will be the new shoreline. The one that's gonna hit tonight. I've seen a mini hurricane, and that one gonna miss us. Who asked you? Get back to work. Well, good news, folks. Hurricane Deirdre has turned north and will miss us. Just love when God hates you. <laughs> Don't worry, Don, baby. I can change where that hurricane's headed. Just follow me. Ta-da! My moon manipulator. Okay, wait, hold on one moment. So Betty Blight is here because she's just here. Like, she's just a singer here. But she also brought her weather manipulator devices and wasn't already working with him. It foretells the weather, raises the tide, changes the course of storms. Can I bring that hurricane ashore here? Like tonight? Piece of cake, Don, baby. And just agrees 
for no reason whatsoever, to no benefit of herself, to work with him and to destroy the coastline. This is the most chaotic evil I've seen a villain in a very long time in any source of media. She just shows up, has a weather manipulator, refuses to elaborate, and then leaves. There's never a motive. There's never a reason. She quite literally just does it. And maybe this is because Gaia herself doesn't actually know the motive behind why, so she skips over that part in the story. So treating it like that makes it almost bearable, but not quite. Also, it's called a moon manipulator, and the main thing it does is control the weather. Just wanted to point that out. Meanwhile, Don Porcaloin did some last-minute cleanup in his office. Get it? It's because he's fat. You worked it out the hotel this evening. How could you know? And you put up your building so cheaply, man. This hotel is doomed. So you're both fired. You miserable carpetbagger. No, no. Now, oh, if you'll excuse me. I have the signatures of a thousand voters who do not want you ruining more coastland. And I'm also here! Weirdly, he has the most compelling piece of actual, like, this may fuck over Don Porcaloin on its own. And this is a subpoena to appear in court! But then Don Porcaloin is just racist and ignores him. No engine's ever gonna win on a white man's court. <laughs> You're in trouble now, Porcaloin! Why'd they all get behind him? Every one of them came up from the other direction, and they all ended up behind him. I get that he's a big guy, but they could stop him. They could gang up on him. There's five of them. Now you are. Ah! Keep calm, everyone. Do not lose heart! The Planeteers will return! And now, back to Captain Planet! Did the old-time Planeteers escape? And if they were Planeteers, did they have powers? Of course. Anyone has power if they work with others. He means power like our means! Oh. Is Gaia okay? I'm just asking. She seems mostly fine, maybe a little forgetful. I just don't want anyone taking advantage of her. She seems like a nice lady, you know? Let us out of here, you scalawag! Colorful dialogue ain't gonna open the door, sweetheart. Neither will small Alec remark. Oh my god, just shut up and fuck already. Maybe if you boys boost our seat to the transom, he could climb through- uh, No, I'm too big. But look, Porcaloin left the key. Would a coat hanger help? Oh, this is so mortifying. Using my bullshit hanger to unlock a door. Why'd she have that? Why'd she have a hanger? Is that something I'm missing about old time southern, like, dressings? She wasn't even wearing anything that really looked like it would work. You know what? Maybe I'm just a boy and I don't know things about women. Possibility. This is, this is a firm one. We did it! Oh, we we did it! it. What? Look! And mine! Okay, so they're acting like they don't know what these rings are. Yet all five of them happen to have them. All five of them just now kind of respond to them as if they're seeing them for the first time. And none of them know what they are. How is that, considering they've been on them this entire time? If I woke up and a ring was on my finger that I did not recognize, I would be confused. But apparently... I'm in the minority here, because it's five against one on that. But what's this symbol on my ring me? It looks like fire! Ah! In my symbol is... Multi! I don't know what my ring does. All it shows is three little old squiggly lines. My ring shows a glow. How on earth? Those kids worry me. Relax. I'll make them a deal they can't decline. Don Porcaloin's plan had worked. The old beach was gone, and what had been cheap inland property was now prime beachfront. But he had to put up his houses fast. So at this point in the episode, the Planeteers are now gathering people to sign petitions in order to stop Don Porcaloin from developing that beachfront. 
Because right now, Don Porcoloin wants to use it essentially as an insurance scam, building tons of cheap houses, taking presumably huge insurance policies, and then using storms to destroy them. At least that's what I think is happening. I really cannot tell. But with that kind of payout and that kind of money involved, that kind of risk, that level of corruption, if we've learned anything from the Boeing whistleblower controversies, Don Porcoloin would definitely be killing somebody right now. He'd be sending somebody after these planeteers. Let's get more signatures! Ah! Whoa! Sweet dreams! <laughs> Betty just pulled up on these dudes. Like, she she ain't playing now. And she's kind of rocking it right now. And also, keep in mind, her device literally moved a hurricane. Don Porcoloin was useless without her because the hurricane had moved off course. This is all Betty Blight. She's just using Don Porcoloin as a front to cause chaos. She is a demon. One of us has to meet Don Porcoloin at his new beach house. Come alone. Or your pals will sleep with the fishes! What I admire about you kids is, you have your feet firmly planted on the ground. <laughs> they are surrounded by weak sand. This is weak sand. This is sand you can roll out of, scoot, something you could move if you really tried. Especially in a little bit, when Kwame's mouth becomes av available for use again. <laughs> When Kwame gains the ability to talk again, and he doesn't say Earth once to break anything that he's done. Now I must leave you. I have a dinner guest. Lydia. You know all this is business. If you say so. Now you and that engine call off this petition. You, you big pompous bag of wires! <laughs> gonna get it <laughs> i'm gonna crawl at you i'm gonna crawl real fast because i'm being fat i think he's dead i see this way here are your rings get a hammer our feet are set in concrete Blythe! Betty Blythe! Turn on your moon manipulator! You got it, Don, baby! Okay, this is the 1940s. Who is this woman? Where did she get this? How did she build it? What? What is her purpose? She is a demon. I made that joke earlier because I was thinking, you know, it made a little bit of sense due to the level of chaos she was creating. But no, genuinely, that's the only explanation I can think of for why she's doing this and why she's helping him. Also, he just got up. Rex is still dead in the back, but Don Porcoloin just got up. He's fine. He's a big guy. What do we do? What would happen, man, if we let our powers combine? They just say that. By your powers combined, I am Captain Planet! Go! Whoever you are! I just said my fucking name. Drown. Whoa. I've heard of heroes having feet of clay, but this is ridiculous. But who are you? I'm your powers, Magnified. Well, haven't you heard the song? Captain Planet. It's kind of funny. I like when shows get meta. It's a weak point of mine. It doesn't always work, but whenever it comes out like this, or where it's only a specific character that can do it, it usually works really well. At least in terms of my particular sensibilities and humor. Captain Planet. No way, Ray. Ah! This is something new. I call it recycling. There you go, a nice paperweight. Just the thing to keep on your desk in prison. Why did he come preloaded with a shackle? He just crunched that up right there. He turned it into a ball. He didn't have a shackle. He just either immediately melted that into a shackle, which is now something Captain Planet can do, 
or he came preloaded with a shackle, which I don't think is one of the powers that has combined. So, where did the shackle come from? Why does Captain Planet have a shackle? Why is he a freak? A certified freak. So yes, Captain Planet officially defeats Don Porkaloin and Rex, whatever the fuck his name is, and throws them at the feet of the police officers, revealing what they've done to them. So Don Porkaloin and Rex go to jail for a little while, then probably get out because Betty Blight just fell in love with his big sweaty body and has a weather manipulator well, or did before it was crumbled into a ball and shackle, but she'll get out. Like how yeah, you're not gonna keep the demon locked up. We get a quick cover on what happened to each of the old planeteers before they died, I guess, essentially. What their life could be summarized as in less than a sentence. I see one his tribe a huge settlement from the government for taking their lands. He was then immediately assassinated by the federal government. The planeteer alert for this episode is actually really bad, in my opinion. And I say that because not only are there two planeteer alerts at the end of the episode, meaning that there were a total of three environmental messages in this episode, but also the first planeteer alert, this one right here don't they see all that trash they are leaving behind has nothing to do with the episode being about littering and trash being left on the beach not about erosion or any of the things that the episode was about i understand that they're just tying it to it being a beach please do not waste energy <laughs> please don't waste your minds and bodies please don't waste our future you. I'll waste our future if I want to. It's my future too. So yes, that was episode 10 of season 3, Hog Tide. It was really stupid and also dumb. It didn't make a whole lot of sense, but the animation was about on par with season 2, and I'm actually looking forward to seeing how the animation improves from season 3 to season 4, considering Hanna-Barbera takes over in its production. It doesn't get any better, apparently, but I'm still interested. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you subscribe. I'm almost at a thousand. I know I'm harping on it, but I'm I'm so goddamn close. But yeah, y'all have a great rest of your night. Or day. It's daytime right now. That's weird. Have a great time.